What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Copart for another Copart walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. Heck, we're gonna start this video off with a thumbnail, guys. A 1987 Cadillac Brom. Did I say it right? Brom? I know, it's Broham, right? Look at my Broham Cadillac. Now, I'm pretty sure it's actually Brom. This is a nice little car, well, I don't know why I just call it little. Probably because I'm about to have a heat stroke. But it's a nice big Cadillac. It's definitely got some problem areas. But for as old as it is, I think we can cut it a little bit of slack. Give it a little bit of credit. The roof, it got some bubbles going on under here and right here. Uh, but luckily, the back over here where the package tray is looks good. It looks good down here. Just a few minor blemishes, some dings around the side. Looks like, if I had to guess, I'd say an old person's car. I really would. I would say an old person's car because it has dings going all down the side. Very consistent dings just down the whole side. Almost like somebody was beating their door into the car. Um, yeah, I would definitely say, and this side has almost none. This side is very straight and it's not hail on that side all right they are very consistent in a row like somebody was just hitting the car with their other car door so uh, i'm gonna say this probably belonged to an older person an 87 got some silicon around the windshield sorry silicone did i say it properly people get so mad i've never seen so many people they get mad about the way somebody pronounces something i call it silicon but then everybody gets mad it's silicone fine fine silicone you can have it, all right? Now, can we enjoy the rest of this car? It is a little rough, but it's not that bad, at least not on the outside. Oh, man. Well, the, uh, the, the leather's cracked pretty badly. But what do you expect for something from 1987? Tell me we can get in this door. It looks like somebody's already been in here. Yes, we can. <laughs> I guess the window is stuck down. It's got the glass in it. It's got the glass. It's probably just off track. A little bit of damage over here. This is coming off. It's got power too. Very interesting that it's got one crunch in the windshield there. I, I'd almost think hail. And the windshield wipers are up like somebody had their wipers going. It almost looks like hail hit it, but I don't see any hail on the rest of the car. No. Now you probably wouldn't see it on the roof, but the driver's seat is in remarkable condition. This is, it's very confusing. It's got grease all over the floor. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's oil and grease all over the floor. The seats look good, but the armrests look really, really badly worn and dirty. Um, I, I just don't know. Looks like we've got a, is this an old Viper? or We've got a remote start. It's called an Avital, Avital, Avital. Does it work? Yes. The battery's dead. It's got power, but I mean, the battery's dead. It's not gonna start the car. So we might as well pop the hood. You're never gonna believe what's under the hood of this. Or maybe you will. If you said this has got a big block 454, well, you'd be wrong. If you said, well, it's gotta be a small block Chevy. 350, well, you'd be wrong. If you said it's got a 305, You'd be right. At least I think. We're going to look right now. Let's take a look and see what the emissions tag says. It should be a 5 liter. It is. Just a just a little old 5 liter. And it looks like somebody's replaced the factory uh, carburetor with a, uh, looks like an Edelbrock hiding under there. I don't know if you can see it very well, but that looks to me like an Edelbrock. It's got an interstate battery that says, it says bad. So that's, that's promising. Um, oh, We've got somebody had a system in this thing. They left all the wires, so somebody had a system in here. Here's what I find interesting. The air compressor is still attached. Did I say in-attached? Attached. I, please forgive me, guys. Uh, <laughs> when it gets really hot like this, and I've been out here for hours, it, I don't know why, but it starts kind of messing with your mind a little bit. You know, you start saying things wrong and it, it, 
So I do want to apologize. It's just, this is the last video I'm filming out here today. I've been out here for hours and it is insanely hot. So let me get my booster pack. Let's throw this thing on a jump. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's see if it runs. All right, we got the GB150 hooked up. We got Primewell tires on the front. What do we got on the back? We got Kumos. So it's definitely got some mismatched tires with the sub and everything. I'm thinking maybe this car's last days before it ended up here probably belonged to a younger person, maybe. I could be wrong. I thought it was an old person's car, and I bet it was at one point. And then I think some younger guy got a hold of it. But it still has the factory old school Delco radio. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that throttle pedal is wrong. I've had these Cadillacs, guys. That gas pedal don't feel right. There it is. No. No, that gas pedal is not hooked up correctly. But there it is. It runs. I do think this is hail damage. I do. I, I think there's hail damage. We might not be able to see it all, but I'll bet once you give this thing a wash, that's when you'll find it. Let's see if the AC works. Oh, uh, well, nothing works, so... Yeah, like it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. What about that factory old radio? You think it still works? That's a, that's a no as well. Nothing. Yeah. It runs halfway decent. The trunk doesn't open either. <laughs> Good Lord. Okay. Power steering. Yes. The brakes feel good. Horn. Nope. Gears. Yeah. It's misfiring like crazy. I mean... Are you serious? Okay. It's... <laughs> Your old school cruise control lever on and off. Your sentinel lights, intermittent wipers, of course, all your windows, which, are you kidding me? It works. Guys, it works. Let's fix that. That way there's no chance of water getting in. I, I, I was interested in this car, like, I don't know, man. Signals work. Um... I just don't know. The wipers don't work at all. Like, there, there's a lot going on here. Seems like it's running better. Well, <laughs> it's, it's running better than it was. Yeah, it is. Fires right up. It's not bad. doesn't diesel when you shut it off or anything. If you don't know what that means, sorry, it's an old school kind of. Dieseling was when uh, you would shut a car off and it would keep running. <laughs> you, could, you could completely turn the car off and it would sit there and go and, and eventually it would turn off. So, I don't know. Somebody put the limo lights on. I'm pretty sure that was not factory on this. It runs well. It looks like it could be put back together for not too much money. I mean, if you can find the parts for it anyway. Um, hopefully, all the things that are not working, like the wipers and the radio and the air conditioning, maybe that's all related to a blown fuse. I wouldn't bet on it, but... You know, it, it doesn't hurt to hope and pray. The carburetor, it's got the wrong carburetor on it, um, and it definitely isn't adjusted properly. Oh, here's why the blower wouldn't turn on. I mean, for sure, it's not even connected. You've got a plug here. I don't know where that goes, but yeah, there's... This one will need some work, guys. This one will need some work. If it was me and I bought it, the first thing I would do is probably... Well, I say that, but... I think the smart thing to do would be to pull the engine out, go ahead and reseal it, reseal the front of the transmission while you're at it, throw a seal kit in it, pull off the heads, pull out the cam, 
put something decent. I mean, it's a 305. It's it's weak. It was made that way, but it doesn't have to be. You could definitely do a little tweaking to this engine and give it just a little more oomph, a little more power, and it probably would get decent fuel economy too for a big boat like this. Comment below and tell me what you think of the big old Cadillac. Now listen, don't start trolling me in the comments over a PT Cruiser. I'm showing this for a reason. I I'm, I'm promise you we're not going to spend much time on this one. I just, uh, many of you know my uncle passed away uh, last October. Man, I miss the guy. I, 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 it's always when somebody's gone, you know, that it's like, I should have spent more time with him. I should have gone up there more. I, I should have, and, and I'll live with that regret for the rest of my life. I didn't ever expect he would die as young as he did. Um, anyway, I'm not going to get depressing in this video, but when I saw this, it reminded me of him because he went out and he bought one of these and he loved it. It was like one of his favorite cars of recent times. I mean, he had some serious muscle cars back in the day. All right. <laughs> the guy was into the Mopar scene pretty heavy back in the day. He loved his Mopars. But for whatever reason, he fell in love with the PT Cruiser in his older age and he bought one. Unfortunately, I don't think he had anybody look it over first and it it was awful he got taken on that car the car itself was a piece of junk his friend kind of facilitated the deal <laughs> so i don't know well you know i don't know exactly what happened there but <clears throat> his friend who's a mechanic facilitated the deal and, and hooked them up with it and uh he never really got to drive it it overheated every opportunity for him to drive it it overheated constantly i came up and looked at it and i told him it's a bad head gasket um, he had a mechanic that said that he could fix it, so he put a water pump on it, timing belt, and all of that stuff. And uh, I think he did end up eventually having to put a head gasket on it too, but none of it fixed it. <laughs> none of it fixed it. So I asked him if they had milled the head when they uh, when they did the head gasket, and he said no, no. This it was a shade tree mechanic. You know, nothing wrong with shade trees, by the way, guys. This is exactly what I am, but I know enough to know that if you're going to swap out the head gasket you at least need to make sure that cylinder head is true. You know, put a straight edge across it in several places across each corner, the middle, the sides. Make sure that that thing is, is true. And unfortunately, um, the mechanic didn't do that. So he spent tons of money on that car, tons of money. And it wasn't even a turbo like this one is. It was just a regular PT Cruiser. Someone left the ignition on, so it's dead. Um, he spent a fortune on that car because he loved it. It was purple and he would post pictures on Facebook all the time. And he was so depressed over that car. Like really, he was very depressed over that car. He would post pictures constantly of it going, well, I sure wish my PT Cruiser was running. It'd be a nice day for a drive. And unfortunately he never got to enjoy that car. So I'm not gonna mess with this. Like I said, we're not gonna we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, and I'm not trying to make it depressing. It's just, it's a reality of life, man. Life is short for all of us. Even if you live to be 101 years old, life is still short. I promise you, you get to somebody that's 101, you say, boy, you've lived a long life. They're probably going to tell you it went by in the blink of an eye. So this is more of a public service announcement. People pass away unexpectedly. You should really spend more time with the ones you love. Tell them you love them. Make that phone call. Whatever. Just... You know, let people know that you care. And I didn't say that because I think you're too stupid to know that on your own. Obviously, we all know that, right? But sometimes, sometimes we just need to hear it. Sometimes we need a reminder, something just to say, hey, you know, give you a kick in the shorts or whatever. And I guarantee you, most of you aren't going to call anybody. And most of you will just go about your day as it's to be expected, right? But I bet there's a couple of you out there that are going to make a phone call today and say something to someone you love just to tell them that you're still there and you still care and you're the people even if it's just one or two of you you're the ones this video is really aimed at all right it's time for run and gun now if you don't know what that means that means i've been out here for hours in the heat and i'm i'm just i can't do it i ran out of water a long time ago and i'm a long way from the building so when i say run and gun that means we're just going to kind of wander through and see if we find anything interesting at all and if we do we'll stop and we check it out and if we don't well then we keep walking <gasps> until we do 
You're kidding me. No, 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 no. No, no. Man, why? Why, why, why? You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Why are you here? I don't see any damage at all. 2011 S554 Matic 2. Um, it's got a bullet hole, I think. <laughs> yep, that's a bullet hole. Whoa. Okay. Well, this just got. Oh. Why? Why? Upside down in the seat? Oh, come on. Oh, man. Why? Give me a minute, guys. That battery is too big to do one handed. So it, te it tore the seat. Unfortunately, I didn't tear the seat. The battery tore the seat. You can see where it just it ripped it. That's <sighs> what a shame. What a shame that somebody did it this way. Looks like it's missing the keys. It doesn't matter though, man. Like, even if the keys are, are long gone, somebody will end up buying this car. It's gonna happen. It's going up for sale. Somebody's gonna buy it. And now they gotta deal with a torn seat because someone just threw the battery. I don't know why I'm trying to open the trunk. I know the trunk doesn't work. There's, there's no battery. Man. I wonder if where that bullet hole is, if it went all the way through. I don't see any other bullet holes. And look at this, can somebody explain this to me? What is this? It's a bread tie, tied to the front wheel. You see that? I saw on the news months and months ago that people were doing weird things like that to cars, putting like little, little keys on their tags, if you will, whether it's a bread tie or something, a piece of tape, something. They would stick something to the car to alert people that like, hey, this is a single female or something to that effect, you know, like so they could abduct them or something. They would do little things like that so that somebody would know and then they could wait, I guess, for them in the parking lot and snatch them up. I've never seen a bread tie on there before, but that's the only thing I can imagine. Why else? Why, why would you put that there? There's no reason to put a twist tie on a wheel. Okay, anyway, back to running and gunning. Uh, we're not doing much running at this. <laughs> I'm just, I'm done, man. I am done. I'm going to continue on this video, though. Oh, what is that? Oh, I think we've seen that before. Yeah, I, well, hold on. I'm real good about finding stuff, guys. No, it's an old Ford Ranger. Take a look at that. Shelter insurance. Why is it here? Doesn't say. Raptor running boards on a Ford Ranger. That's, that's, that's laughable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think you need running boards on a Ford Ranger, guys, but if you do, definitely get the Raptor series, right? It really, it says, it says Raptor. I know it's not like Ford Raptor, but still, it's, it's kind of funny to see a Ford Ranger with Raptor, right? Well, to see it with running boards at all, to be honest with you. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the battery's still connected. <laughs> it caught on fire. And they left the battery connected. Um, yep. Actually, not in too bad of shape. 147,000 miles on the odometer. Not bad. Uh, fire damaged Ford Ranger. Is that something I'd be interested in? Mm, no. Nope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass on that one. But I did see it from a distance. Uh, big old Yukon Denali. And yeah, nah, I'm, I got into this thing where I was wanting one of those really, really bad. And now I'm kind of over it. Oh, look, the sister to the PT Cruiser, the Chevrolet HHR. Uh, oh, never mind. That's, <laughs> that's pretty bad. I was, I was getting ready to take a look at it. I really, I like these old cars from the 90s and the 2000s. I also like these. Take a look at this, a diesel Porsche. Oh boy, this is a, what, a Cayman? A Cayenne, sorry, a Cayman. Cayenne. 
There we go. I'm going to blame that one on the heat, even though I'm just an idiot. But I'll blame that one on the heat, too. A Porsche Cayenne diesel. Very nice. Let's take a look at the interior real quick. Did the bags blow? They didn't. They didn't blow. It's got that same look as the Panamera had. Sometimes, I know that Panamera was only a six-cylinder, but honest to God, sometimes I really do miss the Panamera. That was a... That was a nice little car. And even though it was a V6, it was quick. It, it would move. I really enjoyed that car. So did Monkey Wrench Mike. Okay, well, I'm starting to feel a little queasy here. I'm gonna have to bounce out of here pretty quick. If we don't find anything down these rows here, I'm gonna call it a day. There's a whole nother row. I can't, I just can't do it. Can't do it, guys. Um, Forgive me, I short charge. Man, there's a there's a challenger. <sighs> Should we? <sighs> yeah, let's do it. And there's a uh, Cavalier. Is this a Cavalier? You just don't see these anymore. You don't see Cavaliers anymore. And the damage is not bad. Bumper, fender, door. These things are pretty, these things will go for nothing. Nobody wants these anymore. Super reliable, cheap, easy to work on. Parts are plentiful for these, man. But nobody wants them. Everybody today thinks it's ugly. They forget that at one time, this was one of the best selling cars in America. Now, I don't know that that's the truth. I just feel like it is because I saw them everywhere. These things were everywhere. This is a, what, you're an 03? This probably has the Ecotec in it. I can't remember. They had, uh, they had the 2.2 and at some point they switched over to the Ecotec. And the Ecotec's a great motor. There it is, yeah. Yeah, it looks like somebody swapped the engine out with a different one. Well, I know you guys aren't interested in a Cavalier, so I won't waste your time on it. Um, I would love to have one on the channel. This one's perfect because it needs so little, so little. I could put a bumper and a fender and a door on this in a day and have a perfectly good little car. All right, let's see what else we got. We're going down the last row here, and I probably won't go all the way down, but I did see a couple things off in the distance. <clears throat> the Challenger. I saw another, I think it was an S-Class sitting down here. I just, I can't help but want to go look at it. If that means I die in the process, I'll do it. I'll do it, man. Okay, it's an RT. Nice, but uh, heavily damaged. Very heavily damaged. Oh my, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> this made it all worth, I didn't even see this. I didn't even see this. <laughs> okay a wind up mouse that's that should be the thumbnail right there that should be the thumbnail here's an s class that i saw it looks to be in really really rough shape probably an s550 let's take a look s550 yeah okay so also wrecked and not something really i'd be interested in guys I don't know if you like these run and gun type videos, but uh, this is more fun for me than picking out each individual car because I feel like you're with me. You know, we're walking together, going through the yard and you know, you guys are probably yelling in the comment section, stop, you passed that Nissan Frontier. You know, it, I think it just, it makes it more fun for me, but I totally understand if it's not something you guys are interested in. So drop your comments below and tell me if you enjoy occasionally doing these uh, kind of run and gun type videos i'm gonna tell you right now i'm not seeing i'm not seeing anything else and i am such a long way from the building i gotta get back i need something to drink so i'm gonna call it a wrap on this video i'm really surprised that my gopro has not overheated and shut off today it does that all the time um it's a it's a pretty routine thing which is why i've had to cut the videos down from 4k now you'll notice maybe that on my weekend videos where I'm doing like cars that I've bought, those I typically film in 4K. Um, but the videos where I'm out here in the sun for hours at a time filming, I can't do 4K because the GoPro won't do it. It'll overheat and shut off and overheat and shut off constantly. So um, also you may have noticed, I started a new, a, a new I'm gonna call it a test. Um, I'm doing two videos a day 
Tuesday through Friday, all right? Saturday and Sunday will be my own cars that I've bought that we need to work on or cars that we're revealing on the channel. Uh, Monday will be one video um, because I barely get any time off <laughs> doing this. Um, two videos a day is really, really hard to do, especially when you're out in this damn heat, man. It's, it's rough, but I wanna see if, uh, if the views doing two videos a day are worth me taking the extra time to do them. If they are, great, I'll continue. If they're not, we'll go back to one video a day. So if you notice, if you notice a change, I gotta get out of the sun, man. If you notice a change to the schedule, I'm planning on making, let me get out of the sun. I'm planning on making the, uh, I'm planning on doing the two videos a day at one video at 9 a.m., the second video at uh, 4 p.m. That's that's the idea. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay safe out there. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.